Humiliation is a profound emotional wound, one that cuts deep into the soul. It leaves us feeling vulnerable, powerless, and devalued. Whether it comes from being belittled by others, mocked for who we are, or overlooked when we've given our best, the sting of such injustice can create lasting scars. We carry the weight of those moments, replaying them in our minds, feeling the shame all over again. Yet, in God's infinite wisdom and justice, no pain is wasted. What if the very thing that crushed your spirit is the same thing God is using to elevate you? In Scripture, God often transforms humiliation into triumph. He allows our deepest wounds to become the very stage for His glory. Just as Joseph's betrayal led to his rise to power, and Christ's humiliation on the cross brought salvation to humanity, so too can your suffering be the seed of your greatest victory. God sees the injustice you've faced, and He promises to restore what's been broken, turning your pain into a testimony of His faithfulness. Trust that He has a plan not only to end your humiliation but to use it as the cornerstone for your destiny, C.S. Lewis, one of the greatest Christian thinkers of the 20th century, reminds us that our struggles are not in vain. As Christians, we are called to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in us. This is not easy. It goes against our natural inclination to retaliate. To fight back, and to seek vengeance. Yet, as Lewis said, being a Christian means laying before God what is in us, not what ought to be in us. We bring our raw, unfiltered pain to God, and in return, He transforms it into something extraordinary, something that glorifies Him. The Bible teaches us this powerful truth over and over again. Take, for example, the story of Joseph. Sold into slavery by his own brothers, Joseph was humiliated, stripped of his status, and thrown into a life of suffering. Yet, in the midst of his trials, Joseph chose to remain faithful to God. He did not seek revenge when he was wronged. Instead, he forgave his brothers when they came to him in need. He could have easily chosen retribution. But he understood a greater truth, God's justice is always at work, even when we can't see it. Joseph's story is not just a tale of endurance, it is a testament to the fact that God's justice may be delayed, but it is never denied. The very brothers who had plotted against him were eventually humbled before him, and Joseph was placed in a position of power and influence. His humiliation became the stepping stone to his destiny, similarly, the prophet Daniel faced humiliation and betrayal. Thrown into the lion's den because of the envy of others, Daniel could have succumbed to fear and bitterness. But instead, he placed his trust in God. He declared that God would shut the mouths of the lions. And God did just that. Daniel emerged from that den unscathed, while his accusers faced the justice of the Almighty. These stories aren't just ancient history, they are blueprints for how we should handle humiliation and injustice in our own lives. When people rise against you, when they mock you, belittle you, or try to undermine your worth, remember that you are not alone. You are chosen by God, and if you were not chosen, you wouldn't be hearing this message right now. Those who rise against you will have to answer to God. His justice is inevitable, and it will come in His perfect timing. One of the hardest things to do when faced with humiliation is to remain silent. Our natural instinct is to fight back. To defend ourselves, to prove our worth. But God's Word tells us to do something radically different. In Proverbs 24 verse 29, we are warned, Do not say, I will do to them as they have done to me, I will pay them back for what they did. Instead, we are called to place our grievances in God's hands, trusting that He will deal with them justly. C.S. Lewis once said, Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. This doesn't mean that you should allow others to walk all over you. It means that you trust God enough to fight your battles for you. It means that you refuse to let bitterness take root in your heart, even when you've been wronged. It means that you focus on what God is doing in your life. Rather than what others are doing to you, 
the Bible promises that God will fight for you. Just as He fought for Joseph and Daniel, He will fight for you. This battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. And when God fights, victory is assured. Your enemies may seem powerful now. They may seem like they have the upper hand. But remember that God sees everything. He knows every tear you've cried, every injustice you've suffered, and every word of mockery that has been spoken against you. And He is moving the pieces in the spiritual realm to bring about your victory, you may feel like you're at a standstill, like nothing is happening, but don't be fooled. In the spiritual realm, things are already shifting in your favor. God is preparing a time of conquest for you, a time when all the humiliation you faced will be replaced with double honor. The Bible says in Isaiah 61 verse 7, Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. This is not just a promise for people in ancient times, it's a promise for you today. God is not only going to end your humiliation, He is going to use it as the very thing that propels you into your destiny. C.S. Lewis once said, Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. Imagine. The people who have despised you, the ones who have underestimated you, they have no idea what awaits them. There is a divine law at work, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap, Galatians 6 verse 7. Those who have sown seeds of hatred, envy, and injustice against you will reap the consequences. But your job is not to gloat over their downfall. Your job is to remain humble, to forgive, and to trust that God's justice is better than anything you could ever orchestrate, and when God's justice comes, it will be swift and undeniable. Just as Joseph's brothers were brought to their knees before him, those who have wronged you will be forced to acknowledge the hand of God in your life. They will see that the very things they tried to use to bring you down have only elevated you. They will witness firsthand the fulfillment of God's promise, the Lord will fight for you, you need only to be still, Exodus 14 verse 14, that, if you're hearing this message today, it's not by accident. God is speaking directly to your heart. He sees your pain. He knows the humiliation you've endured. And He is telling you that it's time to let go of the bitterness, the desire for revenge, and the feelings of defeat. It's time to place all of that in His hands and trust that He will bring justice in His perfect timing, God's justice goes far beyond mere retribution. While we often seek vindication against those who have wronged us, God's justice encompasses something far greater, it is about restoring us to a place of honor and healing the wounds that humiliation has left behind. When we are broken and cast aside, it's easy to feel like our worth has diminished, but God is faithful in His promises. His justice is rooted in love, not just in correcting the wrongs, but in redeeming the broken parts of our lives and transforming them into something beautiful, in the coming season, the doors that God will open for you will reflect His justice in the most profound way. These doors will represent more than new opportunities, they will be symbols of restoration and the fulfillment of promises long delayed. Every setback, every disappointment, and every loss will be accounted for in God's divine plan. The people you meet, the relationships you form, and the opportunities that arise will not just be random, they will be divinely appointed moments that align with your destiny. As these things begin to unfold, you'll notice how effortlessly everything starts to flow. What once felt like an uphill battle will now feel like walking in the current of God's grace. This transformation will give you perspective, helping you look back on your season of humiliation not with bitterness, but with gratitude. You'll begin to understand that this difficult season was preparing you for a greater purpose. Through it all, God was shaping your character, refining your spirit, and positioning you for the blessings that are about to come. In His time, He restores all things, and when He does, you will see that every struggle was part of the journey to your victory, as C. S. Lewis so beautifully put it, there are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. The humiliation you've experienced is not the end of your story, 
it's the beginning of something far greater. So, take heart. Hold on to this revelation. Your period of dishonor is ending, and a new season of justice and reward is beginning. Trust in God's timing, remain faithful, and watch as He turns your humiliation into your greatest triumph. God is speaking to you today, telling you that the battle is already won. Even if it doesn't feel like it right now, know that He is moving on your behalf. Every tear you've cried, every injustice you've endured, it has not gone unnoticed. God is preparing a time of recompense, a time when everything will fall into place, and you will understand why you had to go through what you did. So, raise your hands and glorify God right now. Declare that today marks the beginning of a new season in your life, a season of justice, reward, and divine favor. Believe that the words you've heard today are not just for someone else, they are for you. Take hold of them, and let them sink deep into your spirit. God's justice is coming, and it's going to be greater than anything you can imagine. Stay humble, stay faithful, and watch as God lifts you up in ways you never thought possible. Amen.